All right, I'm now at the point of thinking about shielding the Stratocaster. Now I've done a fairly extensive video on shielding my Jazzmaster, so check that out if you will. I'm not gonna probably go into as much detail. Maybe I will, I don't know, but one thing that I was thinking about, when I did Jazzmaster, I used super glue. So uh, somebody commented on that video and said, why the heck did you use super glue? Because you can't get good coverage and it dries too fast maybe, and if you get it on your fingers, it'll stick together and the fumes are harmful and all that stuff. Which, you know, those are valid arguments, but I'm more concerned whether or not it actually adheres. So the other thing I was thinking about is using a spray adhesive. Now this is 3M, you'll see that 45 on there, right there. Now, this is recommended for like hobby projects, gluing like paper to other paper or fabrics, things like that, maybe carpet, I don't know. Actually, 3M has on their website or somewhere, they have a chart about what adhesives to use with certain materials. And for metal and plastic, they don't recommend this. So those those two pieces of material are not mentioned as you know recommended materials for this stuff. That's not to say it won't work for the purposes of something like this because you don't really need that much, you know, it's not really gonna go anywhere once you've got it installed on the guitar, but it's just not something that you don't really have, want to have to worry about either. So what I thought about doing is just doing a, like, like a test piece. I've got some just aluminum foil here. So I'm gonna do, you know, like some spray maybe up here and some super glue down here and just see which one kind of works best. You can see, you know, this, whatever they used on this, this is a Fender, as far as I remember, this is a Fender pickguard. I think it was on my 60th anniversary Mexican Strat that got stolen, but whatever they used held up from soaking it in coffee. Yeah, you can see the discoloration where the coffee went and the aluminum foil kind of protected it. So whatever they used survived pretty well, but I'm just going to try both of these out and just kind of see what works best. So let's do it. Hopefully this spray doesn't get everywhere. All right, I'm just gonna let that sit. And then the super glue, we'll try it out down on this end. And we'll let that sit as well, and then we'll come back and check out the results. I forgot to mention that super glue says it can be used on most plastics and metal. I think it actually works best on metal to metal. You can like pick up a dump truck with a couple of dabs of super glue, believe it or not, apparently. I kind of looked up, I did some research on the most plastics and I believe that means like acrylic and polyethylene or polypropylene, I think. So I'm not positive, but I, I think this plastic will work. But again, we're gonna find out. All right, these have been sitting maybe 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna try to pull them off and see kind of what happens. So, this is a 3M spray. It's not sticking much at all. Now, I will say, that's working a lot better. Yeah, the can actually says, if you want a tighter bond, then you spray both materials and then you wait 60 seconds, I guess, for them to get sort of tacky and then you put the materials together. So perhaps I did not give a fair treatment to that, but I think it would probably do the job. You know, it's not, it, it seems like the more I do that, the stickier it gets. Now, here's the super glue. Wow. Which did not stick to the metal as much as it stuck to the plastic. So I'm very surprised by that. Yeah, it seems like this stuff is actually fairly decent for a project like this. So I'm holding it up by that bond. I'd rather use the spray. It's just cleaner to just get a really good coverage and then just smack the aluminum foil on. So I think I may actually go for this. I'm surprised by the test results. Now, I will say also that you know, like the 62 strats used a big aluminum plate. And if you think about the plate, it's gonna be held on by the screws all around the pickguard and stuff like that. So I'm thinking if I use one single piece of aluminum foil, it's almost the same thing. I'm gonna use heavy duty. And if I go around the screw holes, you know, the screw holes are more or less gonna hold it from moving like back and forth. So that's just another, you know, layer of protection, I guess. And if I don't say it, like in the notes below the video, the actual 3M that is recommended for doing something like this would be the 77. So 3M 77 adhesive spray is supposed to be good for plastic and metal. 
I'm sorry, I said one thing wrong. It says for tight bonds, you spray both surfaces and allow for a minimum of 15 seconds drying, and then you put them together. So the minimum, I don't know if there's a maximum, it seems like the stuff's gonna dry eventually if you let it just sit there. But around 15 seconds, I guess, and then you put them together. All right, really quick, I just wanna show you again the strength of this 3M45 adhesive on the aluminum foil and pick guard. So if I pick it up like this, give it a good shake, it's not coming off. If I actually try to peel it, it takes quite a bit of force to come off. And then it even sticks again pretty much after that. Now I've done that a few times, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's it, as strong as right now, but I think that would really suffice for this kind of project. Okay, so I've run out of time to do all this stuff. I'm just doing this in any spare time I have. I'm outside. It's dark and I have a light out here. So what I've got is heavy duty aluminum foil. See there? And I, I scuffed up my pit guard on the back and I'm gonna spray both sides. I'm gonna wait maybe 30 seconds and then I'm gonna put the pit guard on top of the aluminum foil. Now, concern I guess is, come, probably comes to your mind as a overspray is probably a concern, but what I found out is that paint thinner takes off the adhesive spray, which is what I'm gonna use, the 3M. 45 so that's the idea so here we go let me try to make sure I have the the least shiny side as far as the sticky part or the part that I put the glue on and hopefully I can get it as you know nice and thin or spread out as possible <laughs> Okay. So like I said, I'm just gonna let that sit for about 30 seconds and then we will put them together. Okay, so it's been about 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna put them together. My back is probably in the way, sorry about that. So, yeah, it should be pretty well and good. Again, I will cut out the, the excess and I will uh, clean up any residue with paint thinner. Okay, let's talk about shielding the cavity here. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into it. I'll try not to ramble on, but there are a lot of videos out there about this process and, you know, different options. You can use copper, you can use shielding paint, you can use aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is pretty cheap and easy, so, and I think it does the job fairly well, it does just fine. So that's what I'm gonna use, and I attempted to use um, heavy duty aluminum foil. Actually, I tried the light duty too, or the normal duty for the cavity. Uh, I did use successfully the heavy duty for my pick guard, which you see there, but that's done. And so I tried to do it in, in the cavity and I thought, I, I, I wasn't sure, but I thought I could attempt and I did try. Yeah, I tried to shove an entire sheet sort of inside the cavity, which was not successful at all. The lighter aluminum foil, the normal duty was it was easy to sort of like, it's more malleable, I guess, more it's flexible. So that's good in some ways, but you, I essentially tried to like bunch up and push down into each pickup pocket, the aluminum foil, and then carefully put it down in these little areas where the, the wires from the pickups go. But every time I did it, as I pushed down and, and I, I was very careful, at, at some point trying to like spread it out and get it up against the walls, I would tear the aluminum foil, especially like here on the corners, you know, and it tore, you know, fairly easily with the, the normal duty. I thought this would work better, and it did for the most part. This is the heavy duty stuff, but again, I ran into just, it would just tear in random places, and so what that does is it ruins your Faraday cage, because you've got these holes where, you know, radio signals can get in, interference or, you know, whatever, what have you. And so it basically nullifies your work. And, you know, I could go back over and tape an area as like a patch, but it's just sloppy and it was tedious. And maybe it could be done if you had 
the right patients to do it, but I decided to go a different route. So that was my one method, and I did need this for the pick art. So I was trying to avoid getting this and just use what I had, but I got this aluminum foil tape. I got it at a Harbor Freight for $7. But anyway, it's, you know, you can see how big it is, 50 yards by two inches, and it does not say anything on here about the adhesive being conductive. Okay, so if I were to tape the tape over itself, Inside the cavity, it would get rid of the conductivity of the cage, if you will, and it would not work. But I'm going to use the method where you fold over a piece of the tape onto the surface of the adjacent piece, and then if you want, you can tape over that so that the conductivity is kept, the continuity is there. So that's my plan, and I've not done anything of this nature before, so we'll see how it goes. There's lots of videos, again, from other people, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but that's going to be my method, and I'll try to show you maybe as I go, if it's not too tedious, and then maybe when it's done, I'll show you how it, what it looks like and how it went, and maybe give you any tips that I run into. I guess my biggest question at this point is like which direction to go, if I should try to put just like a flat piece here, here, and here, and then put a tape against around the walls and go all the way around or if I should just do strips like down this way and then one down here and so there's various ways to do it and I guess I'll through trial and error I will figure out the best method and I will share my results okay a couple of observations so far in the process you can see what I've got you know it's pretty blatantly obvious but it's not the neatest. It is going on fairly level and I guess, you know, flat. I can kind of press it down, get get it good and, and flat. But so here's some of my observations. I would recommend getting something sort of round and soft but firm so that you can sort of press the tape down into the corners as you go. I would say keep the sticky, the adhesive off of the sides or wherever as you are putting it down. Otherwise, like the aluminum foil, it can tear. My other observation is this stuff is great. It's very durable. It's way tougher than the aluminum foil, the heavy duty stuff. I don't know that it's any thicker, but I think the adhesive on the back just makes it uh, not tear as easily. And so from that standpoint, it's great. So far, I really like it. Another thing is I haven't really found a great method yet. It's not like, you know, put a piece here, then put some here and it's, it works well. It's just, it's kind of just hit or miss. And then, so one of the confusing things about this is when you fold a piece over to, you know, maintain continuity and then you put like a piece of tape over that, well then you have to remember, because all of it kind of camouflages in against itself, and you have to remember when you're doing your continuity checks, which pieces of you know, just tape that you put on top of the aluminum foil because that piece of tape on top will not necessarily read continuity, but underneath the pieces that are connected should be continuous, if that makes sense. So it's just hard to keep track, you know, like I said, once you start putting them on and you kind of like, you're trying to think like, oh, was that a piece that's going over top of here and this and that? I do believe there's a little bit of um, continuity with the adhesive. I'm, I get some sort of mixed signals like here's this piece on top here is just one continuous piece so I don't even know if you can hear that uh, but it reads pretty much zero. But some of the other ones that like I've taped over again it's just I'm getting pretty much good readings everywhere but you know like I said it's it's a little bit confusing so I'm gonna keep going and maybe I'll stumble upon some great method of doing it I think if possible you know to keep large sections as much as possible together that way you don't confuse yourself versus just little pieces here and there that would be you know one suggestion again using something like this or even, um, I don't know, whatever you can find, like this end right here, uh, the, these pliers, you know, to just get down into the crevices and sort of press it down into the corners. Because like I said, there, in one spot I did push it down too hard and it, it tore through. But, you know, with this method, you can just go back and tape over it with a piece of 
of itself and then you know keep that continuity so again i'll keep going and i'll update you as i go i wanted to explain a little bit better what i was talking about earlier with the uh the pieces of tape crossing over and trying to maintain continuity so i've just got one piece attached to this piece of cardboard and i'm going to do another one and i'm going to fold over a section of it so that they can attach and connect to one another i'll put it like that all right so like so but the problem is this portion here is you know of course doesn't have anything sticky on it so there's the possibility that it could come up i don't know maybe not but to me there's always that possibility that there's no good solid connection there right so then you could lose your continuity. So now if I take another piece of tape and I go over these two to make sure that that portion is down well and it's not going to come up. So I'm going to sort of bridge the gap here with this tape. So what happens is inside the cavity of the guitar over here, these things start to really mesh together and they're mirror like, right? So it's hard to tell if you got a lot of pieces of tape, which one's which. And so and again, I'll try to be as clear as I can about what I'm trying to talk about here. But if I go and I put my uh, multimeter and, you know, see if there's continuity with, between on this one piece of solid tape. Of course there is here. Of course there is. And then between the two, there should be. However, between these two, there's nothing. Between these two, there's nothing. So if down inside your guitar, you happen to do this, and you're like, oh, I don't have continuity. Well, you're really not worried about that piece because it's on top of your cage, right? It's inside the cage where these two is what you're concerned about. But, you know, again, so inside your guitar, if you lose track and you're trying to tell if you have continuity, you may actually have it when your readings say you're not. And it's, it can be confusing. So, you know, in all this, I think... I think, and you know, I would really be able to tell you if I did this a lot, a number of times and, and got a lot of experience doing it. And you can tell I've cleaned this up a little bit from what you saw previously. But I think what I would do is go around the vertical edges with, with as much tape as possible and then put a flat piece down on top of that, folding the edges over. I found that if you fold the edge and shove it in the corner, or you know where the, the there's like a 90 degree it tends to want to stay there better you know because it's kind of shoved and this you know if it's like in a, in a corner in a 90 then the tapes holding it in the vertical and horizontal directions and I hope I'm making myself clear this could be totally confusing but I would say if I had to do it over maybe I would go around the vertical edges with the tape and you know that the vertical piece would touch the bottom it would kind of curl down like an L shape a little bit and then put down a flat large piece over that. So that's my theory. That's what I think would work a little better, but I'll just go and show you. And I really hope this is, this works out, but I should have continuity and this thing isn't super loud, but Um, I don't have any continuity between the output jack and the rest of the cavity right now, but the the output jack plate will be touching, it will be grounded and it will be touching this part of the aluminum foil that's on top of the guitar, which is covered up, I checked. So this will be connected and grounded to the control plate or the uh, pick guard, all the controls inside the big cavity. And then therefore it will be touching this. So then this will be shielded, if that makes sense. So, so this should have continuity amongst itself and it does, but it's not connected. So I'm not testing that portion. Yeah, so this is a little dicey over here. Um, I feel like at some point I'm losing something here. So, we're gonna go back and check this. It's not good. <laughs> um, it's not what it's supposed to be doing. Oh, yeah, a little bit.
All right, I'm gonna see what's going on. On the exact same spots I was just taking measurements and I wasn't getting any reading. I am now getting reading and I didn't really change anything at all. So. I don't know, it's weird, but this multimeter, it's like every other time I do it, I get different things. And I don't really know when this thing needs batteries. I don't know, yeah. I think I'm confident that I have continuity and that everything's okay. I don't believe that you have to have a, exactly a zero or maybe even close to zero reading as long as you have some kind of electrical connection that it'll uh, complete the cage. If I'm wrong and I find out later, then I'll have to rip all this out and start over. But as for now, we're just going to leave it and hopefully, hopefully it works. Hey, I just wanted to wrap up this video by saying that the method that I used in the previous footage that you saw did actually work. I finished the guitar now, as you can see, and I played the guitar in a place that I've previously had some issues with noise, and this was pretty dead silent. I won't say dead silent because you've always got sort of the 60 cycle hum with single coil, true single coil pickups, but otherwise there was no sort of like um, radio interference or anything like that, or like noise from lights and things, so it's pretty dead quiet. I'm, I'm fairly confident that the shielding that I put in here is doing its job. So I would say in summary that this aluminum tape from Harbor Freight works fairly great, and as you can see, I've got quite a bit left so I can use it for any other project that I may have in the future. If you've been keeping up with the playlist that I've made for this guitar, then you might kind of have an understanding of how these videos have worked. What I did was I took sort of videos of each section of the guitar as I did it. I tried to document each part. And so what would happen is at the end of the project, I had all this footage to kind of go through and make into somewhat digestible pieces and make into like their own videos. So that's why if uh, what you saw before it seems a little disjointed, that's the reason. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps, most importantly. And um, there are more videos to come on this guitar. So stay tuned for those. There's uh, quite a bit more things. You know, the more I do this, the more videos I complete, you know, each time I go to do another one, I'm like, wow, this has got to be the end of this thing. But you'd be surprised at how many little things go into making a guitar like something like this. So I really hope it helps, and if you haven't subscribed already, do that. If you haven't liked the video, if you do like it, then be sure to click that below, and we'll see you next time.